I recently ran a poll with my YouTube viewers asking them if they would rather use a sunscreen that was more sheer, even if it had microplastics and chemical sunscreens that actually absorbed into the skin. And as of the filming of this video, 92% said no, that they would stick with a zinc oxide because it is known to be non-toxic to humans. And the other 8% said yes, that they, in the name of beauty, if it was more sheer, that they were going, they would consider using this sunscreen. So what I'm about to tell you may affect your decision on what type of sunscreen to use. Now, this is not a video about the best sunscreen, best drugstore sunscreens or the best sunscreens over 50 or the best sunscreens if you have dark skin. This is actually based on some studies that are continuing to come in and what the results are and that may affect your decision, especially if you are battling a long-term illness if you're planning to have children or you are pregnant. Now, just because you see a skincare product on the shelf, it doesn't mean that every single ingredient that you see on the label is 100% safe. So to give you an example, in February 2019, the FDA said that 12 of the petrochemical um, soluble organic UV filters or the chemical-based sunscreens can no longer be, based on the studies that are coming in, can no longer be considered a generally regarded as safe and effective. And here is the kicker. In September 2021, the FDA actually said these are now considered marketed unapproved drugs. And some of the more common ones that you'll see is homosalate, avabenzone, oxybenzone, octosalate, um, octinosate, and octocrylene. Now, for example, too, back when I was growing up in the 70s, the main chemical sunscreen was called PABA. And I used that because I got burned really bad one summer. And then eventually I started to develop a rash. So I stopped using PABA. Now they have pulled off PABA for the most part because now it is li linked to a whole host of thyroid related diseases. Now this makes me wonder if this may be a contributing factor to my thyroid problems because PABA was one of the most widely used chemical UV filters while I was growing up. And you see women who are my age and older, um, a lot of them have thyroid issues and hormonal imbalances. So it does make me wonder that. So you don't really see this, um, this anymore because it's been replaced by one of the 12 petrochemical soluble organic UV filters. Now what they found is, is, is that if a skincare ingredient has a molecular weight of less than 500 Daltons, it does get absorbed into the blood. And they have proven that all 12 of these petrochemical soluble organic UV filters, all of them, have a molecular weight less than 300 Daltons, which means that yes, they are getting absorbed into the blood as well as in bioavailable in the body. And they've shown studies where they've been found in all sorts of bodily fluids, as well as in the organs. And on the contrary, the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, both mineral sunscreens, they are much larger in molecular weight. And so they've been proven to not be able to be absorbed into the blood or even in the skin. Um, and not bioavailable in the body. Now, the homosalate, the oxybenzone, and the octinazate, those are known endocrine disruptors. And all 12 of the petrochemical uh, soluble organic UV filters, they actually are um, known to function similar to estrogen as well as pesticides. Even the Endocrine Society has said that there are four known endocrine disruptors and they personally have recommended using mineral UV filters over chemical filters. So these sunscreens are not safe for you. You can see why I am not wasting time on the best drugstore sunscreens. I'm just telling you what these um, these studies are showing. And I'm going to, to avoid misquoting this article, I'm gonna just read it from here. It says, according to one article, it quoted over 400, 400 people, 
studies of human and environmental risks of these chemicals. Now, the percentages I'm about to read, this is actually the percentages of the population that they found all of these based on the sunscreen studies. 95.8% of male and female ages 6 to 70 of Americans, 100% of pregnant women, 98% of non-pregnant women, 85 to 85.2% in the European women's breast milk, and it's found in urine, blood, semen, amniotic fluid in the placenta, the fetal cord, the fetal cord blood, um, ovarian follicular fluid, and adipose tissue. Now these 12 uh, sunscreen ingredients are just one of the thousands of known endocrine disruptors, but these studies were basically focused on sunscreen exposure. So this has been linked to fibroids, uh, PCOS, um, prostate cancer, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, fertility on both sides for both male and female. So if you are um, trying to get pregnant or you are pregnant, these are definitely sunscreen ingredients that you want to avoid. Now for your kids, zero to 20, 20 years, the exposure to these ingredients they have found has been linked to ADHD, autism, asthma, early puberty onset for girls and late puberty onset for boys. So if you are pregnant or you know someone who's pregnant or planning to get pregnant, please share this video. Because remember, makeup is an art, skincare is a science. See you in the next video.